Hi, I'm Rick Conlow. Good to see you again. I want to talk to you about a concept, I guess I would just call it, warning, pessimism can be hazardous to your health. The reason I want to share that with you is uh, as in preparation for uh, this year, I've uh, been doing a lot of reading, looking online, reading uh, newspaper articles and things like that, especially what CEOs are saying about their business and where they're going. We found they have some common priorities. Uh, of course, everybody's looking for business growth. Uh, they're talking about uh, talent management. That's a key area uh, today. Uh, also, customer retention, keeping the customers you have, building that loyalty. And then cost control is another big area as well that uh, uh, leaders are talking about. But I also noticed another thing. There's some interesting emotions around what people are saying. It seems to be in all the different areas that I'm talking about. And as leaders are talking, they're sharing anxiety apprehension, fear because of the political climate we're in, the economic climate that we're in. And you hear lots of words about cautiously optimistic or uh, treading lightly in the marketplace or even some saying holding back a little bit depending on what goes on in the economy. And I don't know about you, all those words that I just described fear, anxiety, apprehension, cautiousness, all of that. If that's what leaders are thinking at the top of the organization, do you think any of that gets down to the managers within the organization and then to the employees? And let me ask you a question. If people are thinking about these negative emotions, does it bring out the best in them? I'm here to tell you it doesn't. Quite frankly, I believe it stifles, stifles what they're capable of being able to do. I have a newspaper article here and the headline in the article here says, Warning! Pessimism is hazardous to your health. Uh, the Rochester Mayo Clinic, world-renowned, had done a study, 20-year longitudinal study, and they tracked their patients. They gave them a, an assessment to determine their optimism and pessimism when they came into the clinic, then tracked them for 20 years to see what happened to them with their health. And here's what they found, is that people who were optimistic would live nearly 13 years longer than people who were pessimistic. And I got to wondering, how does that affect organizations? And how does that affect their results? If we've got an organization and all they're thinking about, well, we can't really let loose, we can't really focus, we can't really grow, all these negative emotions going on, quite frankly, I think it affects their sales performance and their profit performance. You know, this is one of those attitude things that sometimes can be a little nebulous, but quite frankly, it affects everything we do. It affects how we implement our strategic plan. It affects how we coach people. It affects how we problem solve. It affects how we communicate. And I just share this as an opportunity, if you will. Let all the other companies out there be fearful and have anxiety. But in what you do, in your company, in your department, Believe in what's possible. Think the areas that you can grow in. Think the things that you can accomplish. Share that with your people. Get good at it, and I think you'll have much better results. In fact, great example of that. I was called earlier this, uh, well, the, uh, before the fourth quarter this year, maybe in September uh, of 2011, and this company we were working with, this particular area was only growing about 5%. They thought they could do better. They wanted me to help them plan for the fourth quarter, so we did some phone coaching with them, then out and visited the site. We did some meetings with the team, did some additional planning, started executing what we worked on, reinforced that, and I'm here to tell you they tripled their results. So in other words, they weren't buying into we couldn't do any better. They weren't buying into fear. The leadership changed what they were doing and how they came across to the team. And guess what? The team responded. <laughs> they got fantastic results. And don't you want to start 2012 that way? That's what I'm talking about. So if you want your people to be better, you have to be better. And that's the thesis of our book, The Superstar Leadership Model. Good boss, bad boss, which one are you? I say it's a choice. Again, thanks for tuning in. I'll talk to you again soon.